An oscilloscope is one of the most important pieces of test equipment. But there are so many scopes on the market. All sorts of different types with different specifications. How do you choose the right one? In this video we'll give you some key pointers of what to look for with insight from the experience of some real industry experts. But first of all, what sorts of oscilloscopes are there and why are they so different? Oscilloscopes are a little bit like humans. They come in a wide variety of packages. <laughs> there are scopes that are very inexpensive that can be used for home use, for hobbyists. And as we go up in bandwidth and the number of channels, we can get very, very large scopes that are priced more than a home. So looking through a specification, what are the main things to consider? Cost is obviously one major issue, but when faced with a heap of data sheets, what's really important? Bandwidth would be the most um, key element, if you like, that you look for on a scope. Um, it would be uh, at least three to five times uh, the fundamental of your signal. If the scope has insufficient bandwidth, it won't be able to capture the signal properly. Its response falls with increasing frequency. This is particularly important for square waves, where the harmonic components extend to many times the fundamental, and we need sufficient bandwidth to capture it properly. If the bandwidth is not high enough, then the square waves will become progressively rounded, and this is no use. It also needs a sample rate that's at least double the bandwidth to satisfy the Nyquist um, sampling requirements. Typically, the industry has gone to a sample rate of at least 2.5 times the bandwidth. Third is memory depth. The more memory depth you'll have in your scope, the more time you can capture at the maximum sample rate, enabling you to retain the full bandwidth of the oscilloscope over a wider range of time bases. Memory depth is important, and its specification may not always be obvious. Make sure you have sufficient memory to capture the waveforms you want. Another important specification is the scope's resolution. One of the interesting elements that surfaced on the market has been the addition of oscilloscopes with more than 8 bits of resolution. An easy way to think of bits of resolution is it's the number of levels that an A to D converter can um, um, use on the oscilloscope. So an 8-bit oscilloscope is 2 to the 8th or 256 levels. A 10-bit oscilloscope is 2 to the 10th or 1024 levels. The more levels of resolution, the more your oscilloscope is going to be able to represent small signal detail. What other specifications are important? With scopes being digital again, they do have an amount of processing time. Um, so many scopes today have a specification called waveform update rate, and this shows how fast the scope can actually capture the signal, trigger on the signal, and put it into display. What actually is the update rate? We think of the update rate as the number of acquisitions per second that the oscilloscope can process and display on the, on the screen of the instrument. The faster the update rate, the more responsive your oscilloscope is going to feel to you when you turn knobs. And the faster the update rate, the less blind time it has, the more time it's live seeing what your target system is doing. Oscilloscopes are used with both analog and digital circuits. When using them with digital circuits, greater insight into the digital waveforms can be really useful. One of the interesting options to explore with oscilloscopes is a mixed signal oscilloscope. Mixed signal oscilloscopes are essentially a scope, a digital scope, with addition of timing analysis channels from a logic analyzer. The MSO channels can be used, for example, on triggering on serial buses. Let's say, for example, SPY that might take three or four signals at a time. I could use the MSO digital channels to trigger on the serial bus and preserve the analog channels for looking at other events in my system. In addition to this, many oscilloscopes also have various other hardware capabilities such as a waveform generator, digital voltmeter and the like. These can be very useful and save on cost and space in many instances as additional instruments may not be needed. In the same way that the mixed signal oscilloscope is optimised for use with digital circuits, other scopes are designed to meet the needs of RF engineers. One of the other types of scopes that's evolved in the market is a mixed domain oscilloscope, or an MDO. 
MDO essentially means it has a separate RF input on the front of the oscilloscopes. And um, oscilloscopes that are not MDOs also have FFTs that perform the same function and can perform an FFT to give you visibility in the frequency domain using any of the analog channels. And what other features might be useful? Other important things to look out for are additional features such as uh, serial trigger and decode and capabilities of the FFT or spectrum analysis. Another consideration is the format of the scope. There are several types of form factors that oscilloscopes come in. You can look for oscilloscopes that will simply be a USB connection that have application software for the scope that will run on your PC. Or you can look for self-contained instruments that have a display, knobs and buttons all integrated in a package, which makes it very, very convenient and easy to move it from engineer to engineer. Although USB scopes often seem a lot cheaper, Remember that you also need to factor in the cost, size and convenience of the laptop or other computer needed to use with them. Nevertheless, they can still present a very attractive option, especially if a computer is already available. There are also other considerations apart from just the basic specification. One of the things I look for in oscilloscopes is how much audible noise it has. Think of your oscilloscope, it's your friend, it's going to be camped out by you in your cube, in your home, and so the amount of noise that it generates is important <laughs> to minimize. Um, so I typically will look for an oscilloscope that has very low audible noise. Um, there are a number of apps that you can download for a mobile device to quickly do a check to see how much noise it's making. So where do you get all the information you need to choose the right scope? Oscilloscope manufacturers will have a variety of information that can be found on their websites. There will be brochures or data sheets that will give characteristics and specifications about each oscilloscope that you might be looking for. Another way to get information is there's a variety of distributors that carry oscilloscopes across multiple manufacturers um, that can be a good source of information. The data sheets often provide all the technical detail you'll need, but often it's good to try out a scope Manufacturers normally are able to loan a scope to good customers to let them try them out. Distributors may also have similar programs for companies that spend sufficient amounts. Apart from the basic specifications though, what sorts of things should you be looking at? When it comes to getting a scope, um, you really want to get something that's relatively straightforward, fairly easy to use, easy to learn. They've got lots of functions, so you'll have plenty of scope to increase your abilities in the future. There it is, a quick summary of the key things to look for when buying an oscilloscope.